new regulations around the Delta version of COVID-19 is, is pulling out a lot of hairs in people in democratic nations. And this is quite shaking and um, could be a warning for other things to come. Welcome to Four Seas One Family. Welcome to Four Seas One Family, where we share thoughts and opinions concerning life in Taiwan, the region, and the world. I'm your host, James Thomas, coming to you from Taipei, Taiwan. And I'm so glad to have you traveling along with me on this journey. And welcome to the show. I'm putting together an impromptu, well, response to what I see is happening around the new rules and regulations in democratic nations, especially as it's related to the new um, Delta variant of COVID-19. Now, I'm naturally, or maybe it's in my DNA, skeptical and cynical of any government regulations that happen to be legislated or put in place behind closed doors that limits the freedoms of people. And I think this is something we all should be aware about and also keep our guards up. Now, the response to this new variant of COVID-19 has caused some people in some nations to, well, throw up their arms and protest heavily, not like even before. And this is something that we should be aware of. Now, my, my skepticism rises to the point of being skeptical of any group in any nation, and I mean any nation, that possesses too much financial, political, and um, even, even technological control. And this is something that we all should be nervous about. Those from democratic nations maybe feel that they have less of a concern, but that's not the real, the main focus should be on. It should be on everything as it pertains to everyday life. Now, we've seen these violent protests in places, in places especially like in uh, France and um, in, in, in parts of Germany where people are just, well, they fed up. Some people feel they just need a haircut. Well, I don't have to worry much about that. But this is something that we should be paying attention to. You've got church leaders in the States that say they'll, they'll ask their followers to leave their church if they come into their church with, a, with wearing a mask. And this is crazy. I mean, democratic nations are supposed to guard people's rights to do things if they're not hurting themselves or others. But to kick somebody out of your church was supposed to be a name under the name of a God that's, that's supposed to be very charitable and caring. It's not something that should be done to people of that kind of faith, at least from the way I see it, from my perspective. Now, this is brought out by, primarily because of fear and fear of losing what they already have. And under the current economic uh, crisis and this COVID-19, well, it is worse than any scare that happened recently. It brings up memories of or historical references to what happened happened in uh, in 1918, and that virus lasted for three years. And this is looked like it's going to last longer simply because back in 1918, there were there, people were not traveling at, to the level that people are traveling today. Now, transportation is so convenient and prevalent that if someone sneezes in Asia, somebody's going to catch a cold in the West. It's just the way it is. These viruses are spreading faster and through so many channels, known and unknown. And this is something that we should also have in the back of our minds. Now, of course, our free will is very important. That's right. Free will is important. As long as your free will doesn't harm others and hopefully not yourself, this is something that we should cherish. And I really wonder now when I talk to my friends and family back home and get the whole story about you, James, you don't know what we're going through. You're right. But I'm trying to stay open minded and positive. But I'm finding it hard. I'm finding it very hard to stay positive because I'm seeing people back home tripping over their need to be absolutely free, but not aware on how their fight for freedom can be used as an internal uh, uh, time bomb to s separate people from things that they once had in common. Now, normal personal rights become, how would you say, I, I fear when normal personal rights becomes 
mandated by government and people who are super influential and have a lot of uh, political, financial, and uh, control like that. This is something that bothers me. You know, normal personal rights will, uh, if they become mandated and legislated and, and governed by certain rules, would just kind of like lead us to a type of mainland China social credit system, which that would Put, which puts people on a different level of of making p- other people prejudice. Well, if this time is not your skin color, your eye color, your hair color, how tall you are, re- what religion you are, it's going to be how many points you have on that little card there. This is something that really would end up biting you in the butt. Will it cause discriminatory discriminatory actions against non vaccine uh, uh, vaccine takers? Is it possible? Or would it just cause an internal war? And this is what I'm afraid of. I mentioned in an earlier episode about is America going through uh, its version of the Cultural Revolution? And it is. And it is. And frankly, from what I see right now, it just may be too late. Or will this type of infighting cause some uh, the government to to create or or shape up a, a, a form of social uh, a, for, a form of social apartheid this is something that we should be aware of and never say never that it cannot happen um, gas through gaslighting and even a portion of a cognitive dissonance people are easily persuaded because most people, let's face it, in most Western nations are so caught up in trying to survive that they do not have the time to make cognitive um, comparisons. I mean, I look at what's happening in my in my nation and, and who controls the media and technology. We got our NBCs and CBSs and, 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 and CNNs and Fox. People of certain classes just have a hard time separating from their information sources that people who they regard as their friends, families, and people who they look up to, they have a hard time pulling themselves away from that. And I see that from where I'm at here in this far, far away place. If a type of social credit system or point system is, is given for people and and causes Western nations to actually put a a heavy appliance on something like a a COVID-19 passport. What does it mean then? That means that if you don't have this, well, COVID-19 passport, regardless of your reasons, it can be uh, medical reasons, legitimate. It can be uh, financial reasons, maybe. It can be religious reasons, maybe. Philosophical reasons, maybe. What would this lead to? Like I just said, some kind of what? Social apartheid? Is it possible? Now, we should also be aware of certain uh, technical oligarchs who have so much power to sway people's minds. I worry about contacts on Facebook who are constantly fed by AI certain types of information that that they that AI perceives as very prevalent or uh, or important to them which is causes them to go into a type of tunnel vision that is quite scary for some people to admit they are in now i just hope at least the people i know and interact with are able to step back and put things aside and see if what they are doing or the image or, or of the perceptions of the way they're seeing in the world is totally fair. And it's, it's hard to be fair sometimes when you're under social or financial pressure. And I think there's a design to this, and um, I'll talk about that in a later episode. People in Western democratic nations must be aware of uh, how they're infighting may be used by, especially outside nefarious forces, or even by some people within the nation who are just hate hate pushers or hate mongers that are just using certain infighting within democratic nations to heighten their own awareness, to, to add to their prestige, or they can just be doing it just for fun. Who knows? I just hope it's not true. Now, you also noted... That, you know, there's, there was old saying that people in America, uh, they don't travel enough, you know. And, you know, I'm seeing more and more people, at least from the black community, wanting to leave America. 
on their black black sit or Black's Exodus. This is something that I'm seeing is on the rise, and I've never seen this over the past 20, 30 years. And what does it mean? Does it mean that those who actually died in America for the rights of people of all skin color should be just forgotten and left on the side of the road and forgotten? I really hope not. I just hope that we can get together and do something to change the course and not allow outside forces or even the forces within who just want to heighten their own awareness or raise up their political esteem or, or, or further pile up their financial resources or whatever. We need to get together and work together and hopefully turn this thing around before it's too late. I just wish I can be a little bit more optimistic. If you find what we have to offer of any value, please click on the subscribe and bell buttons below to keep up to date with our current episodes. And if you listen to our podcast, please subscribe to help us spread the word that we have a lot more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. For Four Seas One Family, I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan. And remember to stay strong, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world.